We begin today's show with a bright spot in the Mississippi response to the coronavirus lockdown, making sure school kids are fed despite the closure of schools and the canceling of classes because of social distancing. In this report, producer James Parker literally gets on the school bus to follow daily efforts to feed children in the Starkville Octibaha School District. Take a look. It's strange. I mean, it's something that I never imagined in my lifetime. Um, from my understanding, everything started um started escalating around spring break, over the spring break holidays. And so word started to kind of leak out that we might not be going back to school over spring holidays, after spring break. And we have lots and lots of people in the state who are employed in hourly jobs and those businesses have shut down temporarily, people are out of work and so they're unable to buy the food that they normally do uh, and, and, you know, feed their, and unable to feed their family. Sadly, we are one of the more food insecure states and often rank as the most food insecure state. Fortunately, we live in a, in a society in a time when, when there is enough food in the world to feed everybody. But when we talk about access, that's when things start to break down. The um, administrator got together and said, we still get the kids still, got to still eat. And they had to figure out how we're going to do it. So they came up with um, going door to door with the bus routes. We met as bus drivers that Monday, and we're delivering lunch that, that Wednesday. There's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes to make sure everybody can get what they need. I have 60 for this, so we have two, no, I have 60, so we have 300 left. Children's development is happening at a rapid pace. Having a proper diet, a, a good diet, makes a big difference in their their ability to develop appropriately. It's important on, for us to feed these kids, to get them the right nutrition, to get them well-balanced meals so that as they're developing, uh, they do so at an appropriate and an ideal pace. No, they two don't have bread. It's a strange situation for everybody to, to adapt to, um, not going to school and Try to make sure all the kids still get um, school work and get fed um, each day. When we get there, to, you always have people that um, volunteer the, that work in the that come up and bag up the food for us to load. So we get there, they already did a great job uh, having the um, food ready to, to be loaded on the buses and stuff um, for all the bus drivers. Like my bus is 65, so they have, for my route was 250 route, my meal we gave us, so they have 250 more meals ready for us to go. And we'll load up um, the bus route, and we'll go on our bus route that we really drive during the school year. Our public health mission and our public education mission shouldn't be thought of as separate. Our economic development mission shouldn't be thought of as separate. Public education is really in service to a healthy, uh, well-equipped workforce 
that can pour back into into society. How important is it, is it for the school district and this community to really band together at a time like this? Well, one thing you hear us talk about around Star is the Jack and Nation. Um, and the Jack and Nation is that everybody pitch in when, when it really count. Everybody got everybody back, in a sense. And um, those people that volunteer, they just want to help out and in the need they can, in, in the fact they can. And so some just came to bag up lunches, some came to help load buses, and some helped roll the bus and gave out lunch that day. So it was like Jack and Nation came together to provide for the community. That we do in Stoff. And we just run our regular route. As you go through, by the, by the second day, we knew who was going to get the meal before we got there. I stood up front, and I tell Coach Denson, hey, give me two, because I know that family going to get two meals. Or uh, give me three, because I knew how many family members going to come out that house. So it's just a process that you learn, because you know the people that you're going to. You know your routine. Um, you know who's going to come out and get it. Look like, what, three? Four. Three. Four. Four. Four in Brooklyn if she come out. Yeah, Brooklyn. Look at this. Hey! Let me help out. Hold on for a minute. There we go. Hey, girl. So what you got on today? <laughs> so these are the kids that ride the bus every day. Um, that's the bus ride I drive every morning. And the lady that was on the other lady that drives, she drives that ride in the evening time. So these kids we see on a daily basis. There you go. There you go. He got good running for him already. There you go. There's two other kids. Two? Two more. There you go, coach. Thank you. Thank you. They're in their house. We'll see y'all on Monday. Have a great weekend. I talked to a parent the other day and I said, you know, as teachers, we always say that um, you're ready to get out of school and, and kids always say they don't want school. You know, you end up missing your students. The kids that you used to seeing and you teaching and stuff, you miss them. So it's strange that, that you don't see your, your students each and every day. Just one a day. Tell them, come on. How many more in there? Uh, come on, boy. Give it up to him. Yeah, Look, you gotta be big and strong. You gotta eat every day, you hear me? Mm -hmm. Every day, okay? All right. Mm -hmm. On my route alone, we gave out a total, the high we gave out was 250. And that was great, and each day it went up. It started off the first day we gave out like uh, 90, and the next day we gave out 100 and something. Then we got out with the 250, so but they come to get it, so um, that's tell me that they want it and they need it. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and these are certainly desperate times in a lot of ways, but I would say that our measures have been far more than, than, than those that represent just a desperate response. They've been uh, very heartfelt, very meaningful, very effective responses. Way more than six, but four right off the bat. One, two. Okay. I got some in this flow. Okay, two more. 
Right, that's six. How many more? more. Randy, four more. Four more. It was a great thing the administrator did for the school district and for for the community in a whole because we're not feeding just people that school age. Um, we feed anybody from age zero to 18. This time we're in now with everything going on in the world, you can't get out like you're supposed to or like you've been doing. You ain't going to school, so we don't know who need it, who don't need it. Um, so we fortunate that the school said, hey, we got the food to provide for kids. Thank you as a parent, um, I would say, to our, our own local school district uh, for this work. And I'm sure that I speak for the parents across the state and the country um, who have children in public schools and who, um, are, who have benefited from the investment that they've continued to make when it might would have been easy to go, go home and wait for the stay home order to be lifted and, re and resume life as normal. They've, they've stayed the course and been true to the mission of public education, um, which is about advancing our society, creating that educated, healthy workforce for the future. And I'm grateful for that. I think it's important that they see that we still care about them and we still um, want to make sure they're doing um, good in life and stuff. And then it's just not about school. It's beyond school. Um, which I think is great for the kid to see, hey, I, I, I go to a school just that care about me and not just about my education. Um, they want to make sure I got everything I needed to survive in life. And, and, and they help provide that for me. Man, I'm just the type of person that I'm going to do whatever I need to do to help out the next person. I grew up in Starville, so I know the need of people in Starville. A lot of folks need that meal throughout the day. A lot of kids depend on that lunch. It's a strange situation that you're dealing with. Uh, and as, as a coach, you always deal with adversity. And it's just, we're dealing with a lot of adversity right now because we don't know what the next day is going to bring. As long as we do it, I'll be out there doing it. Um, and that's all I can do on my end. So I hope as long as we out, we provide meals for the kids. Inspired storytelling by producer James Parker and the team from Mississippi State University Television Center. We want to thank them for their efforts to show all of us just how children and their families are coping with food insecurity and with the effects of the lockdown. Very good story. Yeah.